Hi, I'm Walt Medlin. I'm going to narrate today an animation of a duodenal switch of the loop type, which is a modification. And I'd like to thank Dr. Mitchell Roslin of New York for use of this animation. Good morning, YouTube. How are you? It's Cecilia Lane here. Early in the morning, getting it going. I did my walk with my boys this morning, as usual. And lately, they've been insisting on going this other direction, which takes me up this hellified damn hill. And the shame of it is that if it was the hill just for me, I wouldn't do that shit. <laughs> but when it comes to my babies, it's a boo boo. He's sleepy. Hi, Napoleon. That's my baby. The other one's over there by the window. But anyways, if it wasn't for them, my ass would not be walking up that damn hill <laughs> twice a day, every day. But I love my babies, so I do it for them. And then I'm, of course, at the end, I'm all happy for me, like I, like I did something, you know, like I did it. I walked up the damn hill. <laughs> <laughs> I feel so healthy and like I really exercise super good knowing darn well had it been all up to me I wouldn't have been doing that shit <laughs> so suffice to say I'm still getting my walking in still doing all that um, I have been introduced by this wonderful young lady on Instagram she's so adorable her name is ginger on a journey I believe and she does size I love dancing y'all and anything that equals I love it and exercise is good for me. I'll do it. So I'm going to start sizing it up. Yes. And I will be recording some of those videos of me sizing so y'all can get a good laugh. Because you know, Cecilia's going to do some crazy shit. <laughs> you know I'm not right not right in the head at all so it's gonna be an interesting show and uh i'm gonna take you along there whether you like it or not without further ado i'm now going to present to you some information about the sadie's sips ds loop revision that i had it doesn't have to be a revision if you get it originally at the very beginning of your weight loss journey they'll do the sleeve and do the intestinal shortening in my case, I already had the sleeve. My sleeve was in great shape, so they just did the intestinal, intestinal, intestinal portion. <laughs> Got this request from one of my good friends, a lovely lady in the UK, VSGM Clothing. Thank you so much, girl, for this suggestion. I think this is great. I hope this helps everybody get a better understanding of things. It took me a long time to get all the information I needed to feel comfortable with doing this revision and choosing this particular revision for myself. So if any of you out there are thinking about initial weight loss surgery or revision surgery, here's some more great information for you to help you make an educated decision, an empowered decision, because that's what we're after here. Education and empowerment. All right, enjoy. Hi, I'm Walt Medlin. I'm going to narrate today a animation of a duodenal switch of the loop type, which is a modification. We're going to start here looking at the stomach and the common bile duct and pancreatic ducts and just show the anatomy of parts and pieces that we need to avoid working on directly. And that is particularly where the bile duct empties into the duodenum. Just below the stomach here, that first little part of small bowel is called the duodenum. It's kind of a C shape. The old duodenal switch operation hooked up to this as well, but now we are hooking up with a loop of bowel rather than an end of bowel. You're going to see here, initially, making a smaller stomach, which is a sleeve gastrectomy. And a lot of people just have the sleeve gastrectomy as their only procedure, but it generally doesn't give as great a weight loss as we see with duodenal switch. Along this dotted line, we're going to divide with a stapler and we're going to take this football shaped stomach and turn it into a banana shaped stomach. That's part one of the operation right there. Now, we go below this pyloric valve, which you're going to see in a minute here. And that's the outlet of the stomach. Right there is the pyloric valve. And we need to be between that pyloric valve and where the common bile duct and pancreatic duct 
come in. So this is a fairly small area. And we take our little surgical stapler and we dissect around this and we transect or divide that duodenum. Now, when we do a bypass up above on the stomach, it's a gastric bypass. This is a duodenal switch because we're doing the bypass actually from the duodenum. It's just a few inches further along, but anatomically it's got a different name. Now you can see down below the small bowel emptying into the colon down below. The small bowel is highlighted. With the old duodenal switch, this far end segment of small bowel was less than three feet long. Now a three meter or three yard long piece of bowel is used and this is why we avoid a lot of the diarrhea complaints that people have with the older style duodenal switch. And we avoid some of the malnutrition issues that can go along, we believe, and although that has not yet been proven, that some of the calcium and fat soluble vitamin absorption will be better with a longer piece of bowel. Here you can see now an opening is made in the small bowel down below and that is connected to the duodenum. That is an anastomosis, any attachment. And you can also see that we don't do what's called a Roux and Y anatomy where we divide this lower small bowel and hook it in and that's a whole other component that we can avoid. So you can see on the right that food goes out of that little sleeve stomach, that tubular stomach, and just into that lower three meters of bowel, and it no longer goes through this area which is colored yellow. What is going through there though is bile, which tends to sweep out any bacteria and prevent what we call stasis or, or slow flow where bacteria can overgrow. So now this bile, which has come alone through the upper small bowel without any food present, joins the food as it drops into the small bowel from that stomach. They mix together and you start absorbing food from there. With that longer piece of small bowel down below though, your body has more time to reabsorb nutrients and fluid. So again, probably less diarrhea than we saw with the old, very short-circuited bowel with traditional duodenal switch operation. This illustration gives us a better view of the two ways that duodenal switch helps improve your satisfaction at the end of meals and also prevents hunger from coming back quickly between meals. The removal or resection of ghrelin producing stomach removes one of the major hunger hormones via that first part of the operation. The second part though having food empty into the lower small bowel stimulates cells that also help regulate food satisfaction and hunger. In this portion of the video that's coming up, <clears throat> I'll be sharing with you my conversations with Dr. Freya. I love you, Dr. Freya. You're awesome. At Ponce Bariatric. And if you're interested in surgery with Ponce Bariatric, I have taken this passion I have for WLS and for amazing people like you guys that I just love connecting with and turned it into, dear Lord, I hope it all works out, a business. So this is very important to me, totally after my heart and Ponce Bariatric is a primary partner of mine and an awesome option for those of us who don't have insurance that covers our surgery, uh, are not meeting the requirements for surgery under our insurance or are looking to have a revision and our insurance doesn't cover it. Those are really the categories that I would say would make Ponce Bariatric most useful for you. So be sure if you're thinking about having the surgery that you've exhausted the insured option so that you don't have to pay out of pocket. I don't want y'all spending money you ain't gotta spend. Um, but if that is the case, then definitely check out Ponce Bariatric. Just recently put together an additional component to my um, ambassadress role, and that component is as patient liaison. So when you go to Ponce Bariatric and you say, Cecilia Lane sent me, Cecilia Lane is going to be your BFF from start to finish. Well, we don't ever finish, but from start until infinity, all right? We're gonna be the best of friends. We're gonna be on the phone. We're gonna be Marco Poloing. We're gonna be Skyping and uh, chitty chat. I don't know all the damn app names, but <laughs> whatever. I'm gonna be your girl. 
I'm moving to San Diego soon, so I'm even gonna be 25 minutes from the hospital, from Ponce Bariatric, so I'll be able to pick you up from the airport, I'll be there when you have your surgery, when you go in, when you come out, when you're crying, and you're telling me how horrible it is, I'll be holding your hand, and I'll be cussing out the doctors with you, telling them to hurry the fuck up and give you some painkillers. <laughs> so, anyways, yeah, I'm gonna be your BFF, your back, your ride or die check. Check out this info that I got from Dr. Freya. Thought it was really interesting and um, wanted to share it with you. So this is great information that I'm getting here. I did not expect to come out so well educated and looking at the darn myself right now. That's retarded. I'm sorry. Yeah, great education that I'm getting here. I did not expect to come out this expert that I feel like I'm coming out. So Dr. Freya is just going over with me about the difference between the gastric bypass or mini gastric mini bypass gastro the, uh -huh, the mini. and the um, CDS or the du duodenal switch, which, you know, the CDS is based on that. <clears throat> and he's talking to me about um, the three meters of intestines that's taken in the gastric bypass versus the duodenal switch and how for the bypass it's at the beginning in the beginning the of your intestines exactly. and for the duodenal switch it's the three meters so or five meters at the end exactly. and i asked him so is there a difference between how the food is absorbed when it's in the beginning when you cut out the beginning versus the end and he explained um you could say that just one more time. So for the duodenal switch, we start absorbing when? In the last three meters is where you will start to absorbing the, the, the nutrients, no? Okay. And the bypass is in the first three meters is where you will start to... So after we hit that first three meters, yeah. then we'll start to absorb. So we have more absorption area than with the duodenal with the bypass, or the exactly. CDS. Um, do you have the same malnutrition issues with the CDS versus the DS? No, they need, you need to be more strong or you need to be more careful about the, the, the vitamins the vitamins and all that with the, the, the duodenal or the, the sadi mm -hmm. because it's more, it's more drastic or more strong or more uh, aggressive mm -hmm. because I will leave in only very, very short intestine intestines. Absorbing. So you'd be mildly concerned about somebody who's only regain 40, 50 pounds, yeah. and that I could end up losing too much. Exactly. Or you need to trouble. be, you need, not, not trouble, but you, need, you will need to take too much vitamins in the future and things like that. To supplement? Yeah, the supplements. So okay. we recommend that in your case, I think so, both options is good, but if I decide to do the SADI, I will, I will live in like, like in three meters, I will count in maybe more like five meters mm -hmm. from the end mm -hmm. to, to give it, to give you a, a little longer intestine, you understand me? Yeah, so you... And, and the important like thing, the, the, one of the difference between the bypass and the, the donut switch is we, we respect the pillars, okay? That yes. Is, to don't have a the dumping. pylorus valve, exactly. and apparently people have said that really makes a difference having it oh, yeah. versus not having it. And you said in the mini guy gastric bypass, do you also keep the pyloric valve no. or no? In the bypass, not. Oh yeah. Yeah, in the See, switch. Yeah, I want to keep my pyloric valve. Is that stupid? No, <laughs> no it's good because the the pylorus give you don't give you too much acid reflux, for mm -hmm. example because you, you still have the, the pylorus and, and working. And it'll keep that acid reflux exactly. from getting into my esophagus. Mm -hmm. This is the, the two differences between the, that procedures. Mm -hmm. One and one and the duodenal or the sadi, we, we leave the pylorus and the bypass is, is uh, we, we don't, we, we jam the pylorus, no? okay. we, we use. So in my case, since I do want to go ahead and go with the CDS, I want to keep my pyloric valve. You said you'll just make my intestines a little longer. You won't yes, cut it as short. As, yeah. And I love that. I love yeah. that idea. And that's the route that I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, and that will hopefully ensure me more long-term success. So when yeah. life hits me, my fatness doesn't have to take a hit, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we don't want to be hit with the fat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you understand the procedure? Yes. You understand totally it all? Yeah. Um, and I'm really glad that you explained it because 
you know, I think people have to be educated and, and understand like what their options are and, and what are going to be the, like you said, the side effects, you know, what are we looking at long term, I will show you a picture how we, how we uh, respect the pillars here. Here's the sadi or the duodenal switch, mm -hmm. it's more, almost the same, okay. In this portion you will see, let me make it more, this is the most, we, we did the first uh, time we we do like a gastric sleep mm -hmm. okay and then here's the pillars and then is where we connect in the intestine and here is the end you understand mm -hmm. we start to counting from the end for so the you intestine. start counting from the end and then cutting yeah and over here and and the bypass is different here is we cutting we we leave a little pouch here the stomach mm -hmm. the pillars but the food they won't came from through here okay okay so we start to counting from here and then the beginning from the intestine we count in three meters and then connect it here in the in the pouch okay, okay. gotcha that is the, the difference between Let awesome. me show you another. Good. So i'm learning a lot about the different surgeries what's appropriate uh, and as dr. Freya said there are some concerns because I've only had about 40 50 pounds of regain you know I could have some serious vitamin deficiencies and such and so he's thinking the best route to go is to give me a little more intestines than you normally would with a CDS to avoid that which I love I love hearing that yeah like here's another picture to, to, to see which one is the the bypass or the full bypass Oh, so that's mini versus full? Yeah. Okay. We're, we're, well, it's only oh, that, for the full, the, full the full one. Huh? I'm sorry. The full one, we have two anastomosis. This is the first one, mm -hmm. like we did only in, oh, in the middle. Oh, so you have the two limbs. Yeah. And this one is the other connection The when, when it's a full. We recommend the full one when you have too much acid reflux. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the only reason we, we do the oh, full bypass. Oh, it reduces bypass. acid reflux. Uh -huh. Wow. But... If you want to lose weight and we decide for your metabolic problem and all that, we um, mostly we recommend the mini or the bad one. Mm -hmm. It's only with only one anastomosis like that one. Right okay. Here. So for this one, the, ass, the juices of your stomach or whatever that is, the gastric juices, they're able to still go down and then mix with at this point. Exactly. I love that, yeah. So, yeah. and that then, as a result, minimizes that acid reflux exactly. because the things aren't just going to come up. It's going to be taken care of by the stomach. Mm -hmm. How often would you say you do the um, gallbladder at the same time removal? If you have symptoms or you have stones or things like that in, in, the, in your gallbladder, mm -hmm. we can do it. We can recommend to do it, and for us, it's not a problem. And we don't Does that happen it. very often? Not too often. No. People we don't like to like mix. Me, they we don't like to mix too much procedures yeah. at the same time. We like to do only first the, the gastric. If you don't have symptoms, the problem with your gallbladder, we don't touch. Gotcha. Okay? Because we do two surgeries and sometimes it's a little mm -hmm. more discomfort, a little more pain, or can uh, have a problem with the gallbladder and not with the yeah. sleep. So it's better to do only one procedure at a time. Something I'm curious about. So if you're at a higher BMI, if you're uh -huh. more larger, more obese. Uh -huh. Could you anticipate that this post-op pain might be worse than no. if you were at a lower? So it doesn't matter, has no impact. If you did a good pre-op diet, for us it's that very important mm -hmm. to, to do. Do uh, the pre-op diet. Yeah, yeah, because when you do a good pre-op diet, your liver is very small mm -hmm. and you give me a chance to work easy. And when we work easy, the surgery will, will be short and, and also the recovery. So. The surgery starts when you start with your pre-op diet. Mm -hmm. And if you did it well, everything will going well. Let me show you this picture. Yep. I, I like that. For example, in revision surgery, we we uh, we have these examples. For example, we call revision when you have a previous surgery, okay? Mm -hmm. For example, in the beginning, we have a lot of uh, lap band procedures. A lot of lap band, yeah. When you have the lap band, I can give you two options like the gastric sleep or the bypass mm -hmm. just with the mini or the bypass depends okay when you have a gastric sleep i can provide to you the gastric bypass, bypass or, or duodenal switch mm -hmm. so this is the two options you have when you have the gastric sleep 
And when you have a hiatal hernia repair before, like in this case, mm -hmm. we do recommend the, the bypass or the donut switch. Okay. This is the, the, the procedures or the patients when we call a revision surgery, you know, when okay. you have this kind of surgery. Yeah. How often do people have hiatal hernia? It's, it's very common. Eh? Really? They, really common? They came, they came with, uh, yes, with acid reflux, and when we go inside, we see the yeah. the hole in, the, in your esophagus, and it's where we need to fix it. In this case, they fixed it they before. They fixed it before, and but so you have some, to be careful in their revision. Yeah, when they can sometimes for... Uh, no the surgeries. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Sometimes we found the problem and we need to, to fix wow. the, the, the hernia and continue with the surgery. In the all same. right, guys, that's pretty much all the information as far as the surgery that I had. <clears throat> um, however, I've included two additional clips and they run about like one and a half minutes, three minutes each um, about some other important topics that I think are relevant. So if you'd like to tune in and hang out and watch that, please feel free to do that now. Uh, the first one is about leptin resistance, which has to do with why we want to be fat. And the other one is wet weight set point, which is also has to do with why we want to be fat. And these videos are from Dr. Andrew Jenkinson. Uh, so credit will be given to, you know, these other outside sources below in my description. Um, but I thought this was really interesting and thought, hey, some people may be interested in too. So if you're not too bored, you're not like over it, this damn video is going on for forever, check it out. I think you'll like it. Hi, my name is Andrew Jenkinson. I'm a doctor at the American Academy of Cosmetic Surgery Hospital and I also work in London. And I do bariatric surgery to help people uh, lose weight, gastric sleeve and bypass surgery. I want to talk about uh, the reason that some people uh, increase weight and continue to increase weight and other people seem to be able to control their weight. And this is a, a condition called leptin resistance, which explains why the normal control of weight gain uh, for people who become obese is lost. Leptin is a hormone that is uh, produced by the fat cells and it causes you to have an increased metabolism and a decreased appetite. So the more fat you have, the higher the leptin level in your blood. Leptin should then control the amount of energy you take in by decreasing your appetite and also increasing your energy expenditure through increasing metabolic rate. However, when a threshold is reached of uh, obesity, you then start to get uh, an inflammation around the um, obese cells, and this inflammation then causes a blockage of leptin working. So you get what's called leptin resistance. Your leptin levels are very high. They should be protecting you. They should be telling you not to eat, and they should be increasing your metabolism, but they're not working at all. And this is why you see people who are morbidly obese over 120 kilograms, sometimes 200 kilograms, who are still voraciously hungry. It's because the signaling, the defense mechanism against gaining too much weight has broken down and it is a proper physiological illness and disease. And that's leptin resistance. Today I want to explain this concept of the weight set point. And this is something that I think is really interesting and explains why Patients can lose a little bit of weight, but can't keep the weight off, and the weight always regains. I have hundreds of patients that come to see me all with the same story. They can lose some weight, they can go to the gym, they can calorie restrict. They can, can lose 5 or 10 kilograms, but then the weight will just all pile back on after a month or two. And the reason to explain this is this concept called the weight set point. So everyone has a core weight that their body wants to be, that their body will defend, and this is um, controlled by the hypothalamus deep in the, in the brain. And the weight set point really is uh, verified by your genetics and your environment. So if you're from a family that suffers with obesity and you're from a obesogenic environment, so there's a lot of western junk type food, processed foods, then it's almost preordained that you will become uh, obese. The medical advice you're then given is to go on a diet. Now, if your weight set point is set, for instance, at 120 kilograms, you may lose 5 kilograms through calorie restricting, but as soon as you lose any more, the defense mechanism of the body 
kicks in and you start to actually notice a significant decrease in your metabolism so you'll feel very fatigued and also your uh, appetite hormones controlled from your stomach which sends messages to your brain go crazy so you will have a voracious appetite you'll have food seeking behavior for fatty and sugary foods the weight will go back on and you'll feel guilty you feel it's your uh, weak willed uh, uh, character that's caused the weight regain but it's actually a normal physiological protective mechanism that humans have to stop you starving to death and that's the weight set point explained and the reason that diets don't work